Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host. Uh, joining me today as my co-host, which we have not done this since last year because I've been on an extremely long break, is David. David, thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, and welcome back, and I hope you're feeling well. Well, yeah, I am, uh, more or less, but, you know, with my disabilities, things are up and down, and plus of all the other reasons we were not going to get into on this show, because that's not what this is for, but uh, glad to be back, and um, if you heard the dog barking, I do apologize, that was not part of the music, (laughs) but that's what happens when you do live shows from home, so did you hear that, David? Uh, faintly. Okay. All right. I I put my hand over the phone real quick, but, you know, it's not always easy to do. Anyways, let's get to it. Tonight we're very pleased to speak with an award-winning actor who you may recognize from the many, and I do mean many, roles he's played on TV, mm-hmm. film, or on stage, on theater. So welcome, Kevin Brief. Hello. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank and I'm, you I hope you're feeling better. I don't know what's us. going on, but <laughs> you don't what kind know of dog you have on. that was making all that noise? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's, I hate that. I have two Yorkies. <laughs> oh, well, and adorable. the male one likes to bark more than the female. Yeah, so just like a man, that was right? the male instigator. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I've got a cat. So, I, I, mean, he, I think she'll be quiet. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at your Instagram. Now, I know you just started it, but uh, your kitty was so cute when you captioned that picture about oh. her, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't outside. <laughs> yeah, no no proof of that. Yeah, I just I just joined the, well, I like to call it the Instagram. Is that, is that not the right terminology? I, I'm kind of, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, just joined the just yeah, joined so. it. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really late to the game on that one, apparently, but... Uh, I hear it's big, so I'm happy to be sending off pictures yeah, of my Yeah, it land. is. It's, it's one of the bigger um, places of, or bigger areas of social media is Instagram, I think, maybe. I don't know where it comes in neck and neck with Twitter or one's bigger than the other, but I know Instagram is a big thing these days for people, and, and especially people in the entertainment business. Yes, I just joined I, not, I I mean, a, not long ago but thankfully you reminded me i had it when you tagged me <laughs> <laughs> Did it, uh, yeah i hope it didn't hurt when i tagged you i i, I was a little a little rough on that no but, uh, it was okay. it was it, it, it was okay just a little pinch <laughs> i just try i try to be gentle but you know yeah uh, yeah i have a i have a, a daughter who's a um younger i mean like in 20 early 20s and she uh She's all about the Instagram, and, and I believe it's called Insta, I think. And then yeah, um, Instagram. Snap is another. Is, she's very into the mm-hmm. Snap, which is Snapchat. It just takes too long to say both syllables, so you just call it Snap, apparently. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My daughter's in her 20s as well, and she does Snapchat, but um, I just I never got into it. I mean, I am on enough social media. <clears throat> Excuse me. As it is, and trying to keep up with it is just like ah. Sometimes it really you know? is. It really is uh, all-consuming, but it, it but it's fun too. I mean, it's uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's really interesting. I mean, some people take uh, the Instagram. Some of them, the Instagram. There, I sound like I'm forty-eight and nine hundred yeah. thousand years old with that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, in, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing what people take pictures of and share, and some of them are yeah. really cool. I'm yeah, definitely, said, I'm with, with, and some don't belong up there, so. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I won't hit too many of that category, but you, right. you never know. <laughs> well, first thing I want to say to you is that I love that your wife's name is Pam. She has to be an awesome woman. <laughs> yes, she is. She's very awesome. Yeah, and I, I, I'm finding out all Pams are. It's amazing. 
There, I there's know, like I think I know, one just rotten are. Pam, but she lives somewhere in Iowa, and we don't, yeah, I don't know. But every, every other Pam's wonderful. No, yeah, I, well, that's like, why no. she lives in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Iowa. We love the Hawkeyes. Come on. Uh, uh, no, yeah, but my wife's name is Pam, and uh, and I love her, and she's pretty cool. So I'm, I, as I just said, I've not met an uncool Pam yet. So. Yeah, nice I haven't either. Now, so David I'm, is another I'm, thing I'm good with that. There's a. Uh, yeah, this is really. I mean, most Davids are questionable, but th- uh, this one's pretty good. Yeah. I think. <laughs> most of them. You are. have no idea how many Davids are in my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in that case, I mean, all Davids are wonderful as well. <laughs> Particularly families of Pams and Davids. Like, only Pams and Davids. <laughs> that's anyway, I'm right. I'm getting silly. That's I apologize. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Well, I know that you lived in Brooklyn until the age of three, so you don't probably remember much from that time. But I would imagine being in theater that you spend a lot of time in New York, or do you split it between California and New York? Well, well, at this point, I'm pretty much in California full time. And uh, I did leave Brooklyn when I was pretty young, but I I think it's just cool to say you're from Brooklyn. So I I say that because it's true as well. Uh, but all my, you know, my grandmother lived in Brooklyn. My other grandmother lived in Queens. I had cousins out in Sheepshead Bay, and we lived in Bay, Bay, Bay Ridge area. So I knew, I, you know, I, I knew the area, had visited relatives and stuff. But uh, my claim to, actually, uh, interesting, maybe not an interesting story, when I was in elementary school out here, they would pull me out of uh, class for speech therapy because they, I guess I had a Brooklyn accent, like when I was in yeah. seventh grade. And they were—they actually got rid of my my R problem. I think is that. But um, I think I just—I'm sorry—I call clicked in there. I will disregard it. Oh, that's okay. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, and uh, I was saying, yeah. But as far as uh, working in New York, most of my work in New York is is usually uh, gigs where they bring me there. You know, I'll be flown in to shoot a commercial or a, um, or or hopefully a TV show or movie. I, I used to come in quite a bit. Uh, haven't haven't had, haven't been blessed to get a lot of gigs in New York of late, but uh, but that's fine too. But uh, yeah, New York's great. We I just was back there a few years ago. Uh, uh, we, it's, um, it's so uh, completely different than California, I would imagine. Oh yeah, it is. And you know, I have um, I have so many friends that uh, I went to grad school back east and uh, an, an acting program, and most of my most of my classmates went up to New York and. Uh, I ended up going. To, as all, as I am about, all good actors go to uh, Kansas City, I believe, to start their career, which is what I did. And I was working with a theater company there. But uh, New York's a hard town, you know. I mean, I had so many. I mean, they're, they're wonderful actors, and they, they got some work, but it was uh, always very, very much a struggle. Uh, I think California is just an. I don't know. It's just an easier place to live. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it used to be where all the production <laughs> was, and it still is a lot of it. But now, you know, a lot of stuff shooting in New York and back east now, so that that little paradigm's changed a bit from what it used to be. Because in the old days, you would like, you know, if you lived in New York, you'd do your Law and Orders, and you were done. <laughs> you know, you did if you did each Law and Order and a couple of soap operas, you're that was your that was your TV stuff for the year, pretty much, or for maybe for many yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. But now there's a lot of action there, and yeah, I mean, there's nothing like. It's nothing like being in New York, and certainly not to sound crass. Nothing like being in New York on somebody else's dime, you know, when you're being paid and put up and and wind and dine. That's always very nice. But uh, for yeah, sure, but no one's going to complain about that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I've come back to New York quite a bit. You guys, I'm, I, I, you guys are in Brooklyn, or, or, or in, no? Or I'm actually in Chicago, and David is in. Where are you, David? I'm in, in New uh, York. I'm in upstate New York. Um, I'm like two hours east of Syracuse. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's that's rough winters up there. <laughs> mhm. But uh, yeah, I've just I've been up in that area once. Did the Niagara Falls Cooperstown trip just for I had a, I had a job in Sy- in uh, Syracuse actually, and then stayed longer and toured the area, which is very pretty. Uh, so anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling about New York, and I'm out in California. No, that's okay. We're, we're, that's we're fine. It's 180 degrees right now. We had like a incredible heat spell yesterday. Anyway, like 100 and 110, and I survived it. So 
California. California it was 110? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, yeah, terrible. I read those numbers. Hmm. Yeah, like, uh, I'm, near, I'm not too far from, like, the Burbank area, and 100, and my, I got in my car, and I said, like, 107 as I was pulling out, so. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Remember those when I was <laughs> visiting over there, it hit pretty much, and I was up north. Yeah, it's, uh, those numbers. It was, I mean, it, it was, it, it was quite unusual. I mean, it was, you know, record-breaking heat, but, uh. And now it's, it's 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 cooled down to about ninety, ninety five. Yeah, so I think that's what it is here too in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'm looking at the, it now. It says eighty three, so it's dropped some. So, <laughs> and, but, but we have humidity. Heat, you guys don't. Yeah, it's a, yeah. The dry heat makes a big difference, I guess. And I'm mm. sorry, we're talking about the weather of all things. So yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Come on, that's, so that's good. you mentioned you know moving to Missouri after earning your your degree and that and. I thought it was a cute story because I read that you did it because of a girl. Well, yeah, I joked that, you know, I, uh, yeah, I, well, there was a girl involved. <laughs> uh, but, but actually it was a very uh, a very good move for me at the time. I, uh, I actually started working, of all places, in Kansas City full-time as an actor. There were several theater companies there that uh, it, we actually, I was like actually making a living as an actor in Kansas City, of all things. But there was a lot of... A lot of theater. There are a lot of corporate headquarters in in, the, in that area, so I did a lot of like industrial films for them, and a lot of voiceover and commercial work regionally. Uh, and then about once or twice a year, uh, it always seemed like some te- uh, you know television production or move or feature film came to shoot in the area, and uh, I was kind of blessed to get. I got cast in just about everything that came through town, which I don't mean to sound well hoity toity but it was just a fact and and so by the time I came out to LA I had a, I had a pretty good reel to to pitch myself with I didn't it wasn't you know I, I I had done a lot of stage work but I also was had a lot of film work at that point for somebody right. in in Kansas City uh and it's a great right. I don't know if, just, anybody, if anybody in Kansas City is listening but uh, it's a great town I mean it's it's really a lovely area and I love my time there uh but some doors opened up in LA and I, I went running through them so there I am Wow. Well, that's good. I mean, that you had a resume to go to California with. Not a lot of actors do that. They, you know, as soon as they're done with school, or even if they haven't been to school to learn acting, they just decided they wanted to be an actor, they either just go to California or they go to New York and that's it and just hope for the best. So I think it definitely did work out well for you. Well, I like, you know, I I, like... I, I believe in training because uh, maybe I'm justifying my own my own existence. But you know, I, I got my master's in acting and a, a theater degree, and then worked regional theater for quite a few years. But you know, I got to say, it's the kind of business where you can be standing in the, the line at a grocery store and be discovered. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it does happen. It's it's not the a guaranteed route to stardom by any means. But you know, you don't you don't often get you know way ahead by if you're if you're a plumber, they don't discover you. You know. Being, right. You know, I mean, it, 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 there is that that happens, so people want to chase it, and and you know, it's a very young industry, I think now, particularly in Los Angeles. So, part of me, you know, when I, I get, I advise not that I advise people, I people ask me for advice, and uh, you know, sometimes I say, if you know, if you're good and you're you're young and you've got the you know the wherewithal and the strength and the perseverance try it maybe it's not bad to hit right away and i'm not discouraging college by any means i think no matter what you kind of need an undergraduate degree just to I, I, any anything you learn it makes you a better actor i think you know if you, right. if you learn about history right. and art and every little piece counts absolutely you know so i do i feel bad for some you know when i see a young actor and all they know is act all they've done is act and i don't feel bad for them i mean they're probably making a very nice living but i do think they've uh you know, kind of rob themselves of some of a whole avenue of things they could learn that they could apply to their work and just, you know, apply to their life and be more rounded mm-hmm. and individual. Um, but, but that being said, uh, I, the route I took was the route I took, which, you know, involved, it took a while for me to get out to Los Angeles and start doing TV but, uh, and film. But, but I was ready to do it when I came, if that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. Now, what would you say is the most important thing a new actor can learn from doing theater versus starting out in film or TV? Uh, well, as far as what they learn, I would say, well, one thing, you know, casting people like that background. I mean, it gets minimized a lot. 
when you're, you know, just audition for TV shows. But almost every casting director I know will look at theater credits and go, wow, oh, yeah, that, that's a great theater. Um, you know, and they, that, that gives you some – it's still going to be about your work in the room when you audition or whatever, but it gives you some bona fides as far as they're concerned, you know. It's like, okay, uh, I feel confident bringing this guy in. He knows, he's, he knows his stuff kind of thing. So that's one plus. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all, I mean, there's ways you need to adjust, obviously, from the stage to, to the, uh, the screen, if you will. Uh, but it's all, but all, you know, acting is at its base kind of the same, pretty much the same principles in just being applied at different, with different, um, oh, what's, what am I trying to say? Some people say, you know, it's, it's, stage is bigger and, 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 and film is smaller, and that, that's true, but it's not as simple as that. It's just taking the uh, the craft and adjusting it for the medium, I guess. Uh, but I, I, I mean, this, a, a background and basis in stage work is it only makes you better, I think, and it makes you more. I, you know, you've, if you've already been around and not, you know, you get you, the stage could be kind of tough, you know. But if you already had those few uh, school of hard knocks kind of things, it, it, it'll help your case out here. Or out here by meaning I mean Hollywood and, and LA, which is where mm-hmm. it's based. Um, I don't know if that made any sense at all, but yeah, it does. It actually does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, no, that no, makes sense. Come on. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your favorite play that you've been involved with or would like to be part of? Well, um, I, I out, out in Los Angeles. Um, most of the theater here is is done um what's called what we call a equity waiver or a 99 seat where they allow us union members to work in theater and not get paid isn't that beautiful uh we get paid very yeah. little but it's where i've done some of my most since i've been in los angeles the most my most fulfilling work um and then that's another thing about that contract it uh it allows you out to do tv so if you're working on a on a play and I get a job. I go, oh, hey guys, I hate to do this, but I can't be there Friday night. I'm, I'm shooting this sitcom or something. That happens mm-hmm. with that, that, that contract. But my most, I, I think, I mean, some of the, I've already done uh, a, a play that I, I, I feel like I've done some of my best work ever as an actor. To be frank, uh, it was a play called A Prayer for My Daughter, and it was done in, um, in one of the small stages in L.A. And, and I actually, I mean, not, I guess I should say this. I actually, I won the the L.A. Weekly Theater Award for Best Actor. Yes. That's, and that's mm-hmm. kind of, for lack of a better description, it's kind of the OB of Los Angeles, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. Not quite a Tony Award, but, but an OB Award. Um, but that being said, it was just such a great experience for as a four-man play directed by uh, uh, Albert Alar, who's actually uh, uh, one of the exec producers of Days of Our Lives now. Um, but um, just a, it, was, it was just a fabulous the role, I didn't really know the play before I did it, so it wasn't like a, a role I've been always dreaming to do, but, boy, I sure mm-hmm. love doing it. Um, as far as, like, roles I've always kind of wanted to do, I, I can't sing at all, but... <laughs> <I've always laughs> wanted... <laughs> That's okay. I can't if you, either. <laughs> if, you, if you can do a Fiddler on the Roof with a guy that can't sing as Tevye, that always, that's always been a role that I thought would be really cool to play. I don't know why. It just it, it moves me, that role. Uh, but I think you got to sing, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, mean, I think so too. Yeah, I can kind of <laughs> sing, but as, as I always put it, I can sing. But there are people that do it better. Let them get the job, you know. But um, uh, but otherwise, I mean, it's just uh, th- those are just two roles that come to mind as far as one that I've done that I I just loved what I the work in it and uh, and one that I've thought of doing. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, I've done Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross several times, and that's just a blast as an actor to do. Not not just because of the curse mm-hmm. words, but you know, but just the, the yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, but so uh, but I don't know, that, those just come off the top of my head. I'm sure there's, I mean, uh, many more if I was to give it a lot of thought. I mean, there's obviously some Shakespeare stuff. You know, I got to I got to say that mm-hmm. right. Hamlet, that's what I got to play. Yeah, that's me. Uh, Hamlet, the there you go. Casting in the world, me as Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a very avant-garde Hamlet if you, if you put me in that role. But um, I don't know. That, those are just a few that just popped into my head stage-wise. And I do like to keep my, my, you know, my feet in the water or my, my feet on the stage, if you will, and just try mm-hmm. to do a play every 
every every now and then, just because it's it, it just feeds my artistic soul, as as, as uh, highfalutin as that might sound. Uh, but it, it's a tough commitment in Los Angeles because it's you know you love doing them, but you know it, it's a giving up the weekends for like ten dollars performance, and and that, that's tough huh. to do when you got a family and you want to be home with them and things like that. Yeah, um, right, right. Um, so that. But yeah, but still, it's my. I mean, in my early career, I mean, stage is my bread and butter. That was what I did, and then I did the other stuff to kind of, for fun and and supplement income. And you know, it was always I'd always worked in all all mediums of acting, as far as whether it was voiceover or commercials or film or stage. Uh, but you know, in in L.A., uh, stage is just more of a luxury that I do now and then, as opposed to mm-hmm. what I do for a living. If that makes sense. Plus, it's you know. In, in Los Angeles, it's a showcase kind of thing. Hopefully, you get you know a producer out that sees you and likes you, or a casting director, or whatnot. But I, I, I have found you can't do it for that reason. It just, hey, it's really tough to get people to come. It's really funny. <laughs> it's like, We're doing a play. I'm, I'm, whenever you do a play, let me know. Okay, hey, I'm doing a play. Yeah, I can't make it. You know, get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I have, a, I have also a very, very, very dedicated friends and and people in the. In, in the area that are always are very supportive and come see me in shows, as, and I do for them as well. Uh, but, mm-hmm. but you know, that, that so I forgot what the question was. There we go. I went, went rambling on again. <laughs> I guess that's, no, that's, that's <laughs> quite all right. We ramble. Okay, thanks. We like ramblers, so we're okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I think you got one. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you ever thought of teaching classes? Well, I have, and as a matter of fact, I have started. Um, I kind of I, I taught at a university last year, <clears throat> an acting for film class that went very well. Uh, and that I did one semester, and then they they added it for a second semester. Yeah, I'm not not I'm not to tell you a long story. I took over for a friend of mine that was doing the class because he got ill, and so I finished that semester, and then they I guess they liked it enough to offer it again because they usually didn't. And uh, and I've done some workshops. Uh, uh, kind of introduction to auditioning workshops and uh, at, at a friend's casting studio here in L.A. I am going to be teaching improv in the fall at uh, a local uh, college. And so, yeah, I, I, I had not thought about teaching until <laughs> like a, a couple of years ago, actually, uh, and some of these opportunities opened up, and, and I, you know, I took them, and it's been fun. I mean, it's it's a new challenge. Uh, I, I had to learn how to do lesson plans real quick uh, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not my strong suit in the act in the teaching world, but uh, I'll get, I'll get the hang of it eventually. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I've been doing quite a bit of that of late um, and enjoying it. And hopefully being, you know, I'm hoping being, what am I trying to say? Hoping I'm learning them kids good, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I, I think I have, and, I, and obviously I've just grown but, you know, from your first day of teaching to your last, the, the growth is, even one semester, the growth is, exp- it's way more than you think it's going to be, you know. You, I mean, you're just right. so awful. I, 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 I don't know if I can make this story make sense, but my first night of teaching, I, I was sweating so bad that my entire shirt, you couldn't tell it was wet because the whole thing was wet, if that makes sense. It was just, I don't know, yeah. it was just, I had total flop sweat. I mean, I've been on stage yeah. and been in, you know, I've been on t- movie sets with stars and and man, it just. But by the end of the, you know, end of the night, I was fine. And then by the end of the semester, I was, uh, yeah, I went shirtless. I didn't need a shirt. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but no, it, it just, um, I just grew so much. Wore them I, all down. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so I've got, yeah, so that's the. Thanks for asking about that because that's like actually kind of a new adventure, <laughs> relatively new adventure for me and. Uh, um, I'm liking it. So, hey, if anybody out there wants to hire me for, as a teacher, too, I'm, I'm, I'm here. And, <laughs> yeah, you know. definitely. I mean, there's uh, always people that, you know, can learn from taking workshops or classes. If, if that's what they want to get into, uh, it makes a lot of sense to take them. I think yeah, the I mean, more I, I, training I, I, that you have yeah. and the schooling that you have is, is better all the way oh, around. I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, and uh and hopefully you're working with somebody that's good too. I mean, a lot of good school, mm-hmm. a lot of schooling with somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Eh, maybe not as not as fruitful, but generally most people that are running schools are. I, everybody I know that has a, 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 a you know classes are, are are very good and know what they're doing. So that's not really a danger. Right. 
I'm not even sure why I brought it up. So, uh, <laughs> uh, <but> no. <laughs> now, how do you learn your lines? I mean, do you have a specific way of doing it? And, and how long did it take you to get that quote unquote actor's memory? Well, you know, it, uh, I was just kind of always blessed with a good memory. It's never been a big issue for me at all. Um, when I was when I was a little boy, I used to kick everybody's butt in my family in concentration. If you remember that game, you know you have to match the cards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, so I've always had a really good memory, um, and uh, mine's come fairly easy to me. Not not that I want to sound like hey, look at me, but they do. And I think the best way for me to get my lines, I don't really. If it's a monologue or something like that, I kind of have to sit with it and uh, study it and go back and over it and over it and over it. But otherwise, I kind of just pretty much learn it by rehearsing it or running it with, you know, work running it a few times. And with television and film, usually you're not, you don't have a ton of dialogue, you know, so it's not incredibly difficult to, to learn everything, at least for that day, just, you know, whatever you're mm-hmm. shooting that day or, or what you were working for for that audition. Um uh, but I don't really have a good answer for you, except it just kind of comes easy to me. Um, uh, but that is a good answer. I mean, that's who you are. <laughs> yeah. You I know? mean, there, I did do a play called Laughing Wild uh, by Christopher Durang, and the the opening act is two monologues by a man, uh, and the man's monologue is 27 pages long. So uh, that one I had to really wow. sit down and had to learn. <laughs> and I don't wow. know, you know I've talked yeah. to other actors. We're just kind of amazed by I'm not amazed by me. I mean, but it's just amazing. Once you get going, they're just there, you know. The lines are there. You you know what you're doing. They come down to the movement, whatever movement you can, you know, you, where you're going ties into the line you're saying, what you're trying to get from the person makes the makes the line uh, real and, and always on, on tap with you. And then, you know, the times when things happen on, on stage or even in film with, you know, you go up with the line and you just kind of keep going and make stuff up to make it make sense. It's uh it's kind of remarkable how sometimes we could just be using so many different muscles at the same time when it comes to remembering a line. Um, mm-hmm. um, and I would so imagine yeah, I mean, you have a little bit more leeway as far as not being, you know, dedicated 100% to script when you're doing theater versus TV or film. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, of course. But also you have the leeway if you if you mess up on film, you know, you don't want to, but cut, mm-hmm. uh, let's go back, get that line, you know. You can't do that right. on stage. So there's the, there, there's the there's the yin and the yang to those two. The good and bad of that, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, there's obviously much leeway. And depending on what you know, what kind of work you're doing on on, on camera, maybe the, not that there's leeway, but you know, if something's really if something good's happening and the other person's doing it with you, and the director doesn't yell cut, you know, and you're offline, but you're making some you know, I don't know, magical things happen, you know, you just keep going with that too, and it. it uh, it doesn't need to be cut, but usually they do. If you if you're if you're way off, you just right. you know, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't but yeah, fit but you, what they're going for. In, uh, but you try to always honor the words on the page as much as you can. Mm-hmm. You know? And and even you yeah. know, the playwright wrote it a certain way for a reason, and you try to honor that. But you know, it's live, right. and you might forget something. Yeah, yeah, it's not so, like you can put notes all over the place, you know, because I think the audience would pretty much see what you were doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't work. Um, that, this reminds me of, of an anecdote, if, you, if you'd like a funny anecdote about that. Um, sure. Uh, I worked with Rod Steiger in one of his last films, mm. and um, I had always heard that, you know, Brando wasn't there for his close-ups in the cab scene, you know. Charlie, I could have been a contender, that scene. That was the worst mm-hmm. of Marlon Brando, by the way. I just did. But anyway. Uh, yeah. uh, he, and I, I said, you know, I did, was that true? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. We did my, we did Marlon's close-up. We did the master Marlon. He got out. We switched the cameras around. I got back in the cab. He wasn't there. I didn't see him again for 30 years. <laughs> he said, oh, so my God. Years later, wow. Toronto Film Festival. But he also said, and, and, yeah, he had his little lines all over that cab. He just had, you know, Index cards with his lines just taped all over the roof of the cab and the in the, yeah. the, the vault front. So it can be done. Uh, well, actually, yeah, yeah, that, that's not play, but yeah. So I always I love that story, and he was a really yeah great great guy. Good, good was, I mean, a, you know, a, a, a terrific actor, and uh, one of my mm-hmm. another favorite story from that job was um, 
Rod was pretty pretty infirmed. I mean, he had really, really bad knees or hips or something, and he couldn't walk very well. So we did our scene. They shot the master and then shot his close-ups. And uh, they said, you know, Rod, well, you go back and just go back to your trailer, and we'll, we'll just shoot Kevin with the you know AD can feed him the lines. Don't worry about it. And he was like, no, 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 you better not. He can't work that way. You better bring me back here when you're ready to go. So I thought that was pretty cool. This guy's like an 80s. Wow, really yeah. Rod, but insisted on being the yeah. set. Be on set for my my saying my close up so that's wow. that's the way to do it kids you know uh, those are great memories for you to have for a life yeah it was you a, know, especially yeah. if you admire somebody like that yeah yeah it was it was a, yeah it was really an honor to work with them the movie I don't I don't know if the movie is all that good but you know hey we we had fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> the movie's okay it's a mo- movie called a month of Sundays kind of a month I'm of sure. Sundays I'm not sure I've seen it. that one on, on Netflix Sundays. somewhere or something like that but. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll have to check it. See, I, I forgot how I got onto that. But, you know, so my advice for people that to memorize lines is, you know, have a really good memory. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. That, <laughs> how's that? That's pretty, that's pretty Pract- helpful. Just be blessed with a good practice, memory. There you go. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, there are certainly techniques, mnemonic devices people use. And I've done that. You know, if I have a list of things in a in mm-hmm. a line and I'm really getting confused which comes which, you know, I might come up with, like, you know, I don't know, you know, like if it's an R, an I, a C, and an E, I'll just remember, okay, rice, you know, whatever that, that is. And, and that that's one way I can do it. I don't like doing those things because it kind of takes you out of the moment of what you're, of the action, of of, of what you're doing in the right. scene. Right, or the emotion, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it takes, it just separates me a little bit from my, what I'm doing. But. It, it, it works, and so things like that can can be of, be of some help if if you need them. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I I don't have a good answer on how to memorize lines. I, do, I, yeah. do it. <laughs> yes, <you did. laughs> I don't have a good answer yet. I spoke for twenty seven minutes about it, so go figure that out. Whatever works works for you. Right? Um, <laughs> now you've been in a ton of different TV shows that I love and adore. Um, I'm a huge comedy person. I love watching comedy on TV because, you know, after a rotten day or you watch the news and it's nothing but bad news, you just got to get out of it that funk and you got to watch something funny and laugh. You know, it's good for the soul, like they say. Um, and you were in one of my all-time favorite TV series that unfortunately were canceled, and that was Will and Grace. Oh, yeah. What was your experience on that set? I mean, oh, my well, God, Will and Grace, I love that great. show. And uh, it was just uh, it was a, it, it was a really fun role. They were, I, worked with, I got to work with everybody, you know, all, all four of the main people. And uh, mm-hmm. I played, um, there, was a, there was a period, a season or two, where uh, Bobby Carnavale, was playing right. Will's boyfriend, and he was a cop. Right. And I played uh, his squad car partner. Yes, uh, and I actually remember that. And uh, you I know, never they, missed. They, I never missed it. <laughs> the, the yeah, and the humor. They, the thing they wanted there was just somebody who was just you know clearly not comfortable around gay people, but really, really trying. And that was kind of the, mm-hmm. the character. And yes, yeah, so it was a, it was a lot of fun. A um, couple of little anecdotes from that. Um, that one was we we shot several we shot it and it was going really well and then towards the end the, you know the uh, one of the producer writers came up and said okay let's change that last line uh, Moulin Rouge was in the theaters at the time and mm-hmm. I was trying to connect with the people so in the episode as I'm leaving I say I just want to let you all know that I loved Moulin Rouge meaning I'm paying oh my god but that was they gave me that line right before we shot that so what you saw. In that episode is the one and only time that line was delivered. <laughs> we didn't wow. do it in rehearsal. We didn't do it all week. <laughs> we, we they shot some other stuff that would, that worked fine, and then we shot that one, and it got a big laugh, and that's the one that made the cut. So, it, and I think that's kind of interesting that you know, only time you saw it was the one time it, it got. The only time it was done is the time you get to see. Yeah, but no, uh, I mean they were just uh, everybody was very very welcoming. It was a great set. Um, James Burroughs directed the episode, which you know he's kind of a leg- legend, so that was an honor mm-hmm. to work with him. And uh, and yeah, it was a, it, it was one of my favorite shows too. So as I was told to be on it, um, they 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 were funny people. I mean, it was a really funny show. Um, if I may, one other anecdote from that story is that uh, flash forward, um, I don't know, six years, maybe more than that. Uh, I'm in Paris with my wife, and we're sitting at a cafe. We start chatting with these. 
British, mostly British people, and we're chatting and chatting and chatting, and we're having a great time, and you know, I had a beer or two. But uh, and they go, so what do you do in California? And I said, well, I'm an actor. He goes, I knew it. <laughs> and he got up and he quoted my and he quoted my line from Moulin Rouge. I mean, from Will Did and Grace. Did he really? Yeah, wow. I mean, the guy really? obviously really loved Will and Grace. <laughs> But yeah, yeah he, he 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 recognized me and uh, and said my line to me, and so that's you know you're sitting in Paris and that happens. It's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, that the TV reaches everywhere, <laughs> so th- those Most are some definitely. of my, my 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 fun memories from Will and Grace. But it was a delight, and uh, uh, actually, it looked like the uh, the role Ralph may come back. It made sense. He was you know the, the squad car partner, but then they broke them up. <laughs> Like yeah, I know. Later that season, and then they broke up. It's like okay, well, like I guess I guess Ralph's done. Well, no reason to have him. Left yeah. The boys <laughs> <run> around, so. <laughs> uh, it but, would have uh, been yeah. interesting to have him stay on the show to see how he evolved. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I it, was, it was it was great. Well, speaking of another one of my favorites, and uh, you were on is the Big Bang Theory. Oh yes. my God. That's another one yeah. I never missed. Now, yeah. were you a fan of that show before being cast oh. as well, or? Yeah, of course. No. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a really yeah. funny, really funny show. It's uh, I um, I did actually. I was pretty early on in their run with my first episode. Um, as when I when I did the show, Melissa Rausch was a guest star. She was just starting to be. The following season, she became a series regular. So that. That that'll that'll date me a little bit of when I when I did the show the first time. They had me back another time, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had a, it, it's yeah, it was it was you know once again. It's also those shows are shot in front of live studio audiences, which a lot of I mean a lot of sitcoms, the one, particularly the you know the single camera ones now, are not. There's not a lot of live right. uh, live camera live live studio audience ones, so that's also brings a whole other element to it. That that's just you know that's like the mini the mini play. You get, you get the best, mm-hmm. best of both worlds doing that. Um, as far as uh, good stories from that one, well, we uh, um, we were out of out of the episode. I was standing at uh, uh, Sheldon is in a ball pit, like at a Chuck E. Cheese, and yeah. they're in mm-hmm. the ball pit and diving around. And it was I don't know if you knew this, but ball pits are filthy. <laughs> so oh yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So Jim, Jim and Johnny both get out of that thing like, oh God, I gotta go. Wa-. You know, they just like they ran away to get washed up. It's like, okay, I'll, we, uh, I got, I'll be right back. You know, they were like ready to. Uh, they were just so disgusted by the ball pit. Um, I didn't get to be in the ball pit, so I can't attest to it. But if their reaction is an indication, you do not want to hang out in the yeah. ball pit for very long. Um, but yeah, it was, oh, once it was but, you know, and it, it was fine. You know, to be on any kind of show that's. Uh, you know, a top ten show like that is always, you know, very very exciting and uh, and an you know honor I guess is one word to say it. But um, mm-hmm. I'd read for it a few times before I got this role, so it was nice to to book it. You know, not finally book it. I didn't read for it that often. I but uh, let's see. That's all the money. Well, I I would I say Jim <laughs> Jim Parsons Jim Parsons is a little bit like Sheldon. Then he is, but yeah. It, 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 I mean, he's a very nice guy. Don't get me wrong. And, and Sheldon yeah. is too. Oh no, yeah. But no, I mean, there's a I, very. He's uh, my favorite. I love him. Uh, I had a friend that was one of the uh, writers on the on that show in the early going, and wrote was involved in the pilot. And I remember talking to him after they cast the pilot, and he said, "We found this guy." <laughs> and he's like, "This guy is so good." And you know, nothing gets. I mean, they already knew Johnny. They'd worked with him uh, on Roseanne and some other shows that Chuck Lorre had done. But I remember him just raving about this kid they found at the time, and the kid was Jim Parsons. I think he was f- pretty fresh out of college at that point. So, and they're right. They found oh, a gem okay. there. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. You told me something I didn't know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, he might have been out of college for a while. I'm not sure, but but right, right. I, I don't think he was certainly well, not a known quantity yet. If you could have played any of their characters, which one would you play? Oh, I'm, I, I think I'm definitely a Bernadette, don't you? Bernadette? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 
<laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I mean, I guess I, I, I mean, not if we if they did a Big Bang version, the late, the older years, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, or I, you know, I guess probably, I mean, I could put mostly myself in the role of of, uh, of Leonard. I would think of those of the main people. I don't know mm-hmm. if I. I don't know if I if I come off as as intelligent as you need to be to play Sheldon, but uh, <laughs> uh, but they're all just they're they're all really they're so good at what they do and and this may get me in trouble but they are all so skinny. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's so funny. I mean, yeah. Uh, the good the guys that um, the guys that play uh, Raj and and Howard they are just they must have twelve inch waist. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's the, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, that. of course, but they're very very thin. Yeah, all yeah. Of them. Uh, so I would not quite fit in that. I wouldn't fit in their, let me, I won't fit in their costumes right now, as it were. But, right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I probably am most castable if you were to look at it as, for, as Leonard. And, yeah, I, I, I can relate to his sensibilities of just kind of, you know, the, I love you know, the relationship they have of, uh, I love this guy, but I can't stand this guy. You know, I can, I can relate to that. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. So, yeah, and, that's and, a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so that that well, um, just, I never I've never actually thought of that until this moment. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I could definitely see you portraying Leonard as an older version. I mean, if I yeah, you know, picturing both I mean, of your faces together. That no, no, of course not. <laughs> older brother. Years. That's it. I know. Maybe, I know. Maybe his slightly <laughs> older brother. No. Yeah. No. Of course. Yeah, uh, older there brother. You go. <laughs> younger uncle. No. When they set the Big Bang Theory in a in a nursing home. Uh, I'm probably I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch myself at that point. But, uh. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. What, what other, what other well, shows do you like over the years? Any, any, uh, I mean, I've, what, uh, I've, I've worked on things from you know go back to Wings and uh, Golden Girls. Yeah, uh, Wings Bang was Bang. another oh. good one that I watched. On, on a regular basis, and uh, Which one? I'm sorry, I didn't, Golden I didn't Girls was a regular. I'm Wings. trying to remember. Oh, Golden, Wings. Now yeah, that, I Wings was that my, one. actually my first my first uh, sitcom job in town, and and then they they liked what I did, I guess, and they wrote me back four more episodes, and I was like, hey, this TV stuff's easy. Here I am already recurring. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, 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 that was an anomaly. But uh, that was a lot yeah. of fun. And, it, and the, the, sometimes I'm asked what was your favorite job, and that's often the answer because I came back several times, so I felt like um, I was part of the family, if you will. You know, it's great, right. it's an honor, it's so fun to be on sitcoms. But you know, like Will and Grace, as terrific as they were, you know, I'm being just dropped into this on this family and machine that's just been rolling for years, and I just can't be a you know, I, I, my job is not to be anything to jam up the works and just make things run sm- continue to run smoothly, but. There is that, you know, you kind of just arrive and you say hi to everybody, you, you read the script and, you know, but when you get to come back a second, third, fourth time, you know, hey, Kevin, how you doing? Come on, you know, let's go get a, you know, yeah. want to grab you lunch, you know, one that kind of, of stuff. Man. That doesn't happen when you're this there for one week. So uh, that exactly, was that was a, yeah. a nice part of being on Wings and uh, one of the reasons it's often one of my answers, one of my go-to answers, but I mean it, of uh, one of my favorite shows to work on just because of that element of it, I think. The roles were fun. They were not huge. You know, it was just kind of always kind of a I, – I was. they used to call me teaser man because I was usually in the opening teaser and something usually terrible happened to me. And then, they, then the show Oh, started. no. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, yes, and that – so that was a – that was that was a while back. And then and Golden Girls, you know, just to work with those four ladies was just uh, – they were, I mean – they were just great. Betty White was, you know, all of them were just so sweet. And so, man, they just knew their stuff, you know. Obviously, they've been doing mm-hmm. the show for a long time, but they were all just seasoned, seasoned, you know, professionals. has been in the business for a long, long time. And yeah. uh, one one anecdote from that show is uh, the the two, it was like uh, B. Arthur and Rue McClanahan, I'm forgetting their characters' names, got into like a, a sing-off at this cl- nightclub that they always went to. But oh, Rue, that but, one? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the other one. Keep going. And, and But Rue got kind of sick and couldn't, and just was not in good voice and didn't want to do it that week. So it was, you know, it was booked for one week. We actually got two weeks out of it because we all had to come back. Like, 
like a, a week, two weeks later when she felt well enough to sing. And just they just kept the set up, and we we just shot that part of the show, and then we were done. But uh, um, so if you when you see it, if you ever watch it, Rue is singing her song about two weeks later than B. Arthur, <laughs> maybe more like a week and a half. So just you know, just on a totally uh, you know uh, uh, selfish reason, it was great. I got I got some more money out of it, <laughs> but. <You're> um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that deep. Pam, David, you know it's not about the money. If I just uh, just one yeah. person sees that show and they feel better and it makes their life better, that's all I ask for. If I could just make the yeah, world and better. and that's what it does do for me. So I thank you for oh, that. That's good. Well, that's nice to hear. It does it for me too. Yeah, I can remember that episode pretty well. That was the one where Blanche couldn't keep up with the singing, and Dorothy was uh, the better singer. Well, it was like they were. The, um, one of them was like the bell of this bar, this bun bar. I mean, she'd walk in and they go Blanche, like she was normal. Yep. Cheers. And then yep. one day, uh, God, what would be care? Is Blanche and anyway, Dorothy. B. Arthur came in and you know just sang when just kind of joined the piano and sang, and then was like this. You know, she became the the queen of the place, and then that became yep. quite a rivalry of like, it's my place, you know. And then they had to sing off to who who was. And of course, they all ended in tears. And like, I love you, you love me, and we're, yeah. we're both great singers. But yeah, so yeah, it was it was a different episode because both of them sang, and you know, they both came from Broadway musicals background, so they know how to do that too. And there was a live piano; the pianist was really playing, and it was nice. It was it was a fun shoot, and uh, you know, and also once again, at the time, one of the one of the you know biggest hits on television. So to be on that show was great. And, uh, mm-hmm. and to work with, you know, four seasoned pros like that, that I've watched, you know, all my whole life, you know, over the years doing things and to be working with them was, was very, was very cool. And they were very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, who wouldn't want to work with those people? I mean, my gosh, they've been around forever. They had their own TV series even before that, you know, individually and the, right. just wonderfully talented people. So, God bless the ones that have passed. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. they, uh, Betty's the only one around anymore, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. Betty's, still, yeah. Betty's still hanging in there. Yeah, 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 yeah she's, doing, she's doing okay. <laughs> oh, definitely, <laughs> you know, nice definitely. Do, she's got yeah. like the most vibrant career she's ever had, probably. There, there's not anybody that doesn't love Betty White. I don't oh, I, I can't even imagine someone saying that they don't, that's for sure. Yeah. I know. Now, as far <laughs> as big followings, you know, having a huge following, what they would call, quote, unquote, a cult following is Star Trek Enterprise, which, of course, you were on. Yes. Um, now, was did you play, is it Narg? Is that how you say Narg, that? Narg, yes. Unfortunately, I didn't, that, that, didn't you know. No, you, you, you speak Kelly Wright very well. I was, uh, oh, Narg, okay, yes. good. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows in Tellerite language, the double A is, is an R sound. No. Yeah, okay. the character's name is spelled N W A R G. Yeah, so I did a, a few episodes as Narg, who's a, a Tellerite ambassador. And the uh, interesting thing for, for for Star Trek people, they know uh, the Tellerites were um, in the original series in the 60s, the very first one. And actually, Enterprise was chronologically predating the original. You know, if that might make sense. It was supposed to be taking place mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Uh, the, the original series, so it was kind of nice to have. It, it was kind of exciting for some fans to see to have a throwback, you know, to bring that character. It's the first time they've been back on the series since those days, um, and it was, you know, it was, it was such. I mean, it's an interesting experience because I'm, you know, I mean, I'm in four hours of makeup in the morning, um, and it takes about an hour to get them off. I think we got it down to like three and a half by starting, and it takes about an hour to take it off. And I'd be on set all day, and nobody knew who I was. <laughs> I mean, no. uh, no, nobody ever met Kevin, you know. Uh, it was just, we'd go work, my, we were two of us playing Taylor Wrights, and uh, we'd go do our, you know, do the scenes with everybody and, you know, you know, shake hands and say hi, but, you know, we realized they could not pick us, pick me out of a lineup unless I had all that makeup on. So it was a, it, an interesting thing to experience on that one. Not, no, but I, I actually came back one day after I got out of We wrapped a little earlier. Usually we're the last ones there because it's so long to take everything off. And I came back to the set to say hi to people. I said, "Hey, um, I was the guy that was just in all that makeup. Nobody, nobody knows who I am." So, and the director was like, "Hey, that's pretty cool. I don't think anybody's ever done this before. Come to say hi and as a 
person when they've been an alien. So, so that was kind of nice. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, once again, I think I've said this word a lot. It was thrilling, you know, to be involved in such a, in a uh, what's the word, iconoclastic show. I mean, heck, it's Star Trek. Well, right, we, exactly. We get, get involved in, be involved in that world at some point. Um, unfortunately, we I think once again, my <laughs> going back to my Willa Grace thing. I, I, there were I think there were plans to do more of the Tellarites, but that was that ended up being Enterprises last season. So uh, mm-hmm. no more happened with that. But it was great. We have Michael Westmore is like a legendary, is a legendary makeup artist. Um, he was the um, the makeup artist on the show and built. Uh, you know, they they made. A mouth, you know, they took a, a mold of my mouth and made, you know, mouthpiece for me with, you know, and I mean, it's just amazing what, what we went through to make those guys come to life. And um, one of my, uh, one thing, I, uh, somebody asked me once, what, what, what made, what, what did you do <laughs> to get through the, the, um, the makeup to project the character? Yeah. And, um, I, I think I kind of approached it. I don't know if I did it at the time, but in retrospect, it was kind of like a Shakespearean approach to it, where things were just, you know, had to be a little bigger, but for stay as if on stage and uh, more projection. And uh, yeah, I used a deeper voice and everything, but I think that's kind of how I approach it. They're, they're all kind of rather Shakespearean in, in some way, if that makes any sense. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Because there is a lot of there's a lot of stuff over your face. It makes it a little hard to you know. It's all done really well, so it moves with your face, and uh, you're able to express, make some expressions come through. But um, it mostly come came from the voice and the uh, the stature of the person of the of the character. But, all right. Um, yeah, right. that was that was great, and um, I subsequently met, and met many fans. And how hot was it? Great. Was it Pardon hot? Me? Oh, it was like really hot. Yeah. Uh, wedding. Uh, it was, I, I think so. It'd be hard to tell under all that stuff. But yeah, the also the actually the worst part of that. I don't see if you have a picture of it or anything. The wardrobe mm-hmm. I was wearing was like made out of carpet bag. I mean, it was like so. Oh my heavy. god! Oh, I mean, it, was really, it was. Yeah, I'm now I'm having flashbacks. I forgot how bad it was. Yeah. No, it was <laughs> almost like a. You don't know. Man. You weren't there, man. Uh, no, it was. Um, <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was really. It was really heavy. Really hot. We could only drink water, you know, through a straw. Uh, I, I don't even remember how we eat lunch, um, but um, yeah, it was. And, and we, you know, yeah, yeah, they just threw everything in. There. Here's here's a steak sandwich in, in a blender for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No. I, yeah. So actually, as bad as the mask was, I actually kind of got used to that. But the, the 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 cape thing they had me in was really, really heavy, and very hot. Yeah. Wow. No, it was a miserable experience. Now that I think about it, no. It's yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> was fun. It was. Uh, well, I, I know uh, when they do those those historical type movies and stuff, you hear that quite often that the the costumes are really not comfortable. So I can imagine that. Yeah. Well, at least it you know it was a gown. It was a, it wasn't tight. <laughs> it kind of yeah. kind of hung on my body, but yeah, but it was. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it, it had a lot of heft to it, as I recall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a, a, wow. one funny thing from that one, I was out just outside getting some air, and uh, actually one of the producers, a couple of the producers from Wings walked by that I knew from Wings. They were now on uh, Frasier, and uh, first of all, I just said, hey, guys, and they were like, what? Who are you? <laughs> hey, it's Kevin Briefing. <laughs> so he said, Kevin Briefing. Goes, oh, hey, Kevin, how you doing? And then it cracked me up. I think it was uh, Chris Lloyd. He goes, oh, yeah, so what are you working on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just cracked me up. I was like, what what <laughs> what possibly could I be working on? Yeah, I'm 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 working on the you know a sitcom right now. No, but it was very funny. Was, what are you working on? But obviously I'm like geared up to look like an alien of some kind. So then that, that, yeah. that, that was one funny anecdote from that day. Um, but no, very enjoyable. Well, and, and we you, said we did two. Um, oh, the one other thing I I I, I had to shoot somebody. Uh, and I use I, this is something for all all you to know if you're ever using a laser. They, there's no kickback, or phaser, I should say. So I was shooting the guy, and I was like kicking back, like like because they you know they had to put the effect in later, and the, the special effects like, hey Kevin, no kickback. They just it just shoots it out, you know. So another lesson learned. Did. So I just had to like <laughs> you just have to hold it and act like you shot, but you know it doesn't kick back at you. And then they put it on the other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just 
interesting tidbits well, from the set. That's that's something good for somebody to know that's acting now that hasn't actually worked with that. So there you go. You taught a new thing again. There you go. If you get on set and they yeah. give you a phaser, you will impress them all if you don't do a kickback the very first time. That's right. And, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. He's been around phasers. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yep. And you can and you just in the back of your head go, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. You led me down the right path this time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it was, um, yeah, well, you know, what can you say? It was awesome to work on, on Star Trek, uh, a Star Trek. Of yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's so many Trekkies out there. And one thing I wondered about is when you attended a Star Trek convention, um, you know, what you're saying that they don't know who you are without the makeup. I mean, how does that work? Yeah, they just have to trust on the guy. <laughs> I've actually done a few <laughs> Star Trek conventions, uh, and uh, i got to say, you know, I mean, sometimes people are like, oh, Star Trek, that must be weird. And I'll tell you what, I had such a good time. The people are so nice and, and just so unabashedly happy about being there, you know, and, and, and their, and their mm-hmm. passion for the show. I, was, I just really enjoyed it. Um, but, yeah, I'm just signing. I'm there, me, and I'm signing pictures of, pictures of Narg. It's like, mm-hmm. quite frankly, like anybody off the street could take those pictures and probably sit down and say, oh, yeah, that, that was me. Yeah, where, where, where do you sign? <laughs> um, but, you know, it's they, they can look at the credits and they uh, – and, yeah. I mean, I mean, and I'll tell you what, these, the Star Trek people at conventions know their stuff. <laughs> you know, they're – I, was, I yeah. thought that, yeah, that they yeah. would know who each character is and who is played by them. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I, you know, they're – If they know – if they, know if they, if like, they read uh, the credits – if they read the list of credits, if they're very regimented and read all the credits and who plays who, they could point you out. I That's bet true. You. Well, if, particularly if they, you know, checked out who's this Kevin Brief and then they saw what I look like and all that. But, uh, but it was, you know, but it, it, you're right though. I've I've had people come on. Who is that really? That could be anybody. And on and some extent it could be. But you know, I I read for it. Other guys read for it, and they cast me. And then put me in un- underneath all that stuff. So it must have be something about what I brought to Narg that, you know, made it a little different than the next guy that they might have mm-hmm. put under all that makeup. Yeah. I'd like to think that anyway. Um, yeah, of course, of course. That's the reason. And I, yeah, yeah question uh, and when I, was, uh, <laughs> when I was signing, it was another thing that I thought was made me laugh. Uh, at one of the Star Trek conventions, I was sitting next to a few of the girls that played the Orion Slave Girls, if you're familiar with the show. Another throw back to the earlier, you know, beautiful women that are all green, like like they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were there, and and, and nothing. I, I don't mean to, this cast dispersion is about anything, but they were essentially they were hired as as extras on the show. But they're beautiful women that were green, <laughs> so you know. Yeah. I, I had kind of a major. I had a major role through several episodes, and their line was a lot longer than mine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I get it, but also once again, they were really sweet. Um, I don't know if uh, that that might not have been a very funny story to tell, but yeah. there you go. <laughs> Everybody wants to be green, don't they? I don't know. Everybody wants to be green in, in bikinis. Well, it, you know, yeah. I, I guess it depends on the type of year, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I know David has a couple of questions for you, but before he starts, I, I know that his initial question is going to be about Days of Our Lives, and I'd just okay. like to mention that this is not your first foray to being on Days. So uh, are any of the listeners out there, you know, when you've seen them this time, not the first time. Yeah. So go yeah, ahead, go ahead, David. Time. Okay. So, hi, David. <laughs> my, hi. So <laughs> my, my first one was, it says, everyone seems to like, Carl the PI's Hawaiian shirt, like I do. Yes. So was it <laughs> was it your idea to wear the shirt, or was it Day's wardrobe? Well, it, it was it, it was scripted. Uh, you know, it said Carl uh, Hawaiian shirt. You know, Jimmy Buffett feel kind of thing. So that was in the script. It's descriptive. So I um, whether that, I think, I'm assuming that came from the writers. They they must have added. You know, that's what they wanted. Uh, the shirts that you see on the show are actually mine. I brought I brought some choices for them, and they had some stuff like there as well. And the wardrobe guy, oh, I like those. Where are those? So, uh, but it was in the it was scripted on the 
page that Carl is in a Hawaiian shirt. How about that? that? Yeah. They look nice. It kind of reminds you of Magnum PI. At least it did to yeah. me. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and I, you know, I, and I think it's very. I mean, it's a very specific choice that they made for the character. It's really it tells you a lot about the character, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah, it does. Pi friend, pi friend of, of of Steve, but you know, it could just be a guy in a sport coat. But they, you know, a guy in a a guy in an Hawaiian shirt having a beer with him is a totally different vibe than, mm-hmm, than the other guy. Mm-hmm. So you know. It, 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 it certainly informs the character in, in, in many ways, I think, and, it and it's been quite the hit. It defines you. Yeah, I think so. So, um, okay, what were your favorite memories working on The Young and the Restless and Days of Our Lives? Um, well, Young Young and the Restless, I, I just did a uh, I did one day as a bartender, uh, and it. One of my one of my favorite memories. I don't. This is really not a favorite memory, but we, I was called so early, and I got there and nobody else was there except you know the, the, nobody had gotten there yet. So that was kind of weird. It's like oh. I'm in the right place, aren't I? Uh, so we 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 shot that very quickly. Uh, worked with um, oh gosh, Kristen, Chris, Chris um, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, anyway, and he was wherever uh, he Christoph was. Christoph St. John. Yeah, Christoph St. John. Thank you very much. Sorry, Christoph. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was he was really uh, very cool. Um, he was very you know. Once again, with a, a soap opera, when you're um, at daytime, you kind of come in and you don't you just kind of get dropped into it if you're not like a, a day you know a, a contract player and they're all the time. So yeah, they just I guess kind of got dropped in. into it and just started working. And, and Christoph was like so confident, you know, but he just said, man, you're doing great. If nobody's telling you that, I just want you to know. Because people are, you know, a lot of times you don't get that feedback. You just got to, you just know if you're doing something bad. <laughs> you just figure right. if, they're going, yeah, if they keep going, they must like it. But uh, for the fans, I don't know if you know, that basically when you shoot a, a, a daytime series, you kind of come in. You get called to the stage, you block it, and then you shoot it, and then you move on. <laughs> There's like one take, maybe two if something goes wrong with with, the, with anything, camera-wise, or if there's just something they just cannot keep going over, like a, a tel- to- totally blown mind or something. But so mm-hmm. um, to get that feedback from them was very very encouraging, and I felt you know I felt comfortable with what I was doing. Um, I had done a uh, general hospital as well back many, many, many moons ago and worked with really? Luke and Laura, which was very exciting. Um, I'll tell you how far back it was. Uh, the OJ trial was on every day, oh. and we oh, weren't wow. sure it was going to air. Uh, and as it turned out, the one, day, day, one of the days they took a break and the, the, the trial was in, the, in recess was the day my general hospital aired, so it got to air. <laughs> Everything else, I think, was either airing or they were putting it on like at two in the morning or something during that time, because the, oh. the trial was taking over all of daytime. So that was probably what ninety, ninety five, ninety six. Yeah. So that's when I did the General there. Hospital. Um, yeah. The, so the the the, the young know, restless was one day, and then my my main memory from that one was uh, how nice he was. <laughs> it was, it was Christoph very cool. is a sweetie. Yeah, everybody was yeah, nice for him to take, for him to you know take that moment to really. Uh, you know, to, you know, to make sure I knew, because he, I mean, he knows what it's like to be an actor. You know, you're like, uh, you know, right. we assume we're, I, I, I'm, that was the worst take ever, right? Or, you know, you, you know that's kind of sometimes how you assume that. But, I, I mean, I was pretty confident in doing my thing, but it's nice to get that feedback. And then, actually, as it turned out, mm-hmm. uh, the producer came downstairs, you know, as I was getting wrapped and was very, very complimentary as well. And. Then actually, uh, Christoph actually made a point to go, hey, did anybody come down and say anything to you? Because they should have. <laughs> and Aww. the producers were up in the booth. They said, yeah, yeah, she just came down. He goes, okay, good, glad to hear that. And then, and then he went on, and I went on. And I'm sure he, he probably, out. you know, has never forgotten that as well. He's probably, I'm just That's kidding. very nice. <laughs> yeah. Way, he was very nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he went and made a journal entry about, about the whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in his book. You'll have to ask him that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as far as days, well, I, I the first time I did days, I played. Uh, it was when uh, Bell and uh, Sean were on the island of Tindalau. Right. That's and right. And I played. I played the sheriff of Tindalau, and 
I did like I think I did four episodes. I think it's like in 2007, I believe, because it was I was my last shot. The last one we shot was like a week before I was getting married. <laughs> so I was like, oh good, it's done. So I don't have to worry about my honeymoon. We can we can go. Um, but uh, and that was really I mean that was once again it was just great to want to come back several times. You know, it, it's just really. I don't know. It just, I don't know. It just makes you feel more like the story I told about wings. You know, to be able to come back and do the role several times. Yeah, uh, yeah. My my one my one funny memory from that is uh, I was the sheriff of Tindalau, which is you know in the south, in the Caribbean somewhere, wherever it was. I'm not sure exactly. And they had me in shorts because you know I'm an island guy, right? And right. Shorts and like a sheriff shirt. And uh, Albert Delar, the director at the time. Came and looked at me and were uh, came out. I came out of the set. He goes, "Oh, okay. Let me take a look at that." Yeah, come with me. <laughs> we went back to the makeup. He goes, "Okay, this guy's supposed to live on an island. Can we give him some color?" Because <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I was, like, <laughs> so white." <laughs> he was like, "I don't know if he did that to you know for lighting in the camera, so I wouldn't you know blow it out with the glare from my legs." But so then they had, they spray tanned my legs and, and my arms and stuff. Me. Oh. Like I belonged on an island a little bit more than, than I did. Um, but but yeah, I was uh, a lot of a lot of variety of in the scenes I did too. I mean, it was, I mean, all the same location, but it was like it wasn't it, we had you know it was, it was it was fun to be there several times and and be able to create the character. Um, and then then Carl uh, just happened, and uh, that was as far as that experience. Just you know, I mean, Steve and Drake were just fantastic to work with. Um, in the, in Marnie, the Saita, I, I don't know how to say her name. Saita, I believe it is, is the cast director. So, and uh, the audition was just really nice. She was great in the audition with me. Um, it, uh, yeah, it was just. Um, yeah, I just sound like a Mister Mister Pollyanna here, but it was just a great experience. You know, it was, just, it was fun. Um, I liked the character a lot. I think. Uh, I you know. I, I'm not sure if he'll if he'll be back some more. Hopefully he will be because I just think it's a fun character and and people seem to have responded well to him. And um, and it's not just about the Hawaiian shirts, although that, that's a big part of it. And that's so right. more Hawaiian shirts to show the <laughs> world. That's really why I want to work more. Now, um, but yeah, we uh, we uh, we uh, we knocked it out. We knocked all this stuff relatively quickly uh, in in the morning and. Um, we, we, you know, we just Steve and Drake and I worked on stuff in the dressing room, and it was nice to just, you know, and then we, uh, we in the in the makeup room we we worked on that, and then we all went to, um, I think it was Steve's dressing room. I might have been Drake. I think it was Steve's, and we just, you know, worked on stuff in there. So we came in pretty ready, a little more so than you normally get on a on a soap opera. But might have been partly because we were the first shots up that day, so they weren't already. Somebody wasn't. They, sometimes somebody's already on the stage doing their scenes, and then you come in to do a scene with them. In this case, we all started fresh in the morning together, so we had some time to work, work, uh, run the lines, and any ideas we had about you know the relationships and stuff. We chatted about a bit, and um, went out there and did it. So those are, in a nutshell, those are my 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 four. Let's say one, two, three, yeah, four times on, on different soap operas that that I, uh, I can tell you about. That, you, have, you had a the, nice chock full of uh, experience there. I did, and uh, going back to the um, the General Hospital, another cool thing about that was uh, a was Luke and Laura you know, working with legends, and then uh, and my character got bit by a dog, so we had to have a we had a trained dog out there that bit my leg. <laughs> they had me in like a padding, my leg was padded, and then it was a little oh. scary, but the dog you know, grabbed my leg and they shot it, and then luckily I still had a leg when we were all done. Yeah, but right. oh, yeah, over the years, uh, it you know. It, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I being self-effacing, but you know, I'm not exactly, you know, your your leading man daytime look as far as like the handsome guy that's gonna. Well, I'm a handsome guy. What am I? I don't want to knock myself down, but but you know what I mean. I mean, I'm not like the classic leading man type. So for me to get the roles on on, on the soap operas has been really fun, and I usually I think it's the characters are they're a little more charactery, so it's able to bring a little more. Fun. Mm-hmm. If that makes a little sense. more, more player, except for that boring guy that just comes and kisses all the girls, you know. That, that was, right. That can't be that fun. Yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah, no. Day, days was a. Uh, it was really, really. Uh, both times was just a delightful experience. 
and uh, happy, very happy to be part of the the daytime world for a short while. So I know it's a. I was a in my back in my day. I was a, an all my children guy. That was a, that was that was my story, as you say, for years. Mm. That's the one I've You're right followed. up in my alley there, because I was an ABC <laughs> girl to start with, too. So <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, you know, if I ever got a chance to be in Pine Valley, and, and that'd be fun, too. But alas, there is no Pine Valley anymore. Alas. I know. But, uh, <laughs> I know. But, Don't make me cry you know, now. But Salem's a good place to be, too. <laughs> <What's wrong laughs> <with Oh, yeah. You have no, no idea I mean, how that tore my heart out you know, when they canceled all my oh. children and one life to live at the same time. I mean, come on, how evil can you be? I know it's terrible, and you know that, the terrible thing that with all that uh, was they moved both those shows to L.A. first, and so everybody mm-hmm. like came out here and they pulled up their lives and back east to stay on the show and came out here, and then what was it like? Maybe a year later, if, if even that, they pulled right. up on the shows. It's like. Like I mean, not it's another year of the shows, but like you know, could you guys thought of that a year ago? So we didn't have to like exactly you know, back to our lives. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was and I there was a, a terrible um, you know uh, a slashing of the, the the soap opera happening there for a while. I don't I think it's so. I, I don't think anything else is in danger in my opinion. I mean, there's only four left, and you know, one on well, two on CBS I guess, and one on the other. So they're the yeah they're they're you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't think any of the networks want to get out of the daytime business necessarily, but they they certainly wanted to minimize their involvement. It seems like, unfortunately. Well, yeah. from your from your lips, as they say. Yeah, but yeah. I don't not not to get too right. political. I'm just you know they got their reasons, mm. I guess, and it's all, all right. Money, and all the reasons are money, I suppose. Um, yes. But I, 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 my guess is all of us soap fans are we're, we're probably safe with the the four that are left. We'll. Uh, I yep, just keep watching them. That's all you can yeah. do, whether you like the yeah, storyline or not, or a character or not, or whatever. You you just have to keep watching because, you know, it changes, and that's all there is to it. Your your favorite character will eventually be on, and then they'll be off because not everybody can be front burner. So, you know, just roll yeah. with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, if, you know, if uh, if I'm uh, if, if it should, should happen that they want to see more Carl, I'm I'm game. I'd love to do it. It was, uh, definitely, it was really, definitely. Really, really so any Dave and, fans out there need to uh, start yeah. tweeting uh, at NBC Tweet Days and let them know. Oh yes, please. Uh, I I feel feel free. I, I thank you for saying that. Um, that'd be great because I mean it was just Steve and, and Drake were just really I mean they're, they're cool guys you know. I mean I'd love to be back even if they were jerks, but they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think we I don't know, and I just like that you know that we got to do. Uh, you know, get to you know, did some work besides just being on the set together, and and worked on things, and that 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 was uh, exciting for me to have that chance because normally, particularly in on, on daytime, you don't get that chance being a, a day player or you know, officially you mm-hmm. call it a day player if you're not a contract role. But I, you know, I did right. several, several as as Carl, but um, you know, you just kind of get called to the stage and you do your stuff, but to actually have a chance to work with the guys and and talk about you know characters and what we're trying to do here was, was, was pretty cool. And I'm, I think I'm just repeating that. I apologize. I think I just said all that. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> David has one more question yes, for you, yep, and then I, I have a couple, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, sure. Yep. So what did you see the difference between working on prime time versus working on daytime? Well, I, I think the main difference is just that, that thing I was referring to, the, the speed of it. Um all TV's, you know, fairly fast. I mean, not all TV. Uh, hour long is is not. It's more film feature feature like in the pacing. But daytime just fast, man. They, I mean, you know, the shooting of seventy seventy five pages a day. So yeah. I mean, on a on a sitcom, you know, you're there all week. You you do you rehearse. They make changes. You rehearse. You know, you rehearse the changes. You get blocked by the director. You're working with the the other actors. You're around all day. For like you know anywhere from five one to five days, depending on how how they book you in, so you have some time there uh on a on a television show an hour uh you know you're you're on the set you're you may not get as much rehearsal, but you're there longer you know you're 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 in your trailer you're going through makeup you're you're on the set for a rehearsal, you go back while they set the lights you 
you know, work with your fellow actors, your fellow director, you know, level. So there's more time involved there. But with with daytime, it's just fast. You got to know your stuff. I mean, in all, in all in all these all these situations, you need to know your stuff. But you really need to in daytime. You got to come in with those lines solid yeah, and intention solid because you know, once again, you're just brought to stage. They were they block it for camera and for movement for the actors, and then you shoot it, and then you're done with that scene. So that's the biggest difference, I think. Um, I mean, this, you know, um, scripts are. Um, I mean, each each script's a different format, you know, as far as how it's actually on the page, and um, so that's different. Uh, there's most most everything on. Um, on soaps, oh, everything is done with boom mics, so you're not you're not getting mic'd with uh, anything on your body, as opposed to often in television you are. I mean, in, in prime time you are. You know, you have a mic hidden somewhere on you, uh, so everything's on the boom for the guy up in the rafters getting the recording. Um, but like, like all the other ones, I mean, you're just with these guys, that, the cameramen, the sound guys, the property. They just you know they're right on top of everything, um, and really good at what they do. Which is, you know, that's that's true of all of the uh, prime time or daytime. But if, if in, a, in a nutshell, probably just the the speed of it, I think, of how speed. how little rehearsal you get and how quick you shoot. That would, right. would sum up. Right. To sum it up. Well, off of daytime and into general, um, I read that you also do your own stunts. Is that something that you trained for early in your career, or was that did that come later on? Well, as far as um, I, 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 to an extent, I can do my own stunts. Uh, I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not flying off buildings and racing cars. But I, I've done some. My, my base, my training came from uh, grad school in theater because I learned stage combat. It's not exactly the same as you need on on set, uh, mm-hmm. but I've been able to, you know, be able to. Basically, any kind of I've done some I've done fights on uh, I could do hand to hand combat stuff. Uh, I can do some gun. I mean, I, I'm, I can shoot a gun, obviously, but when they want me to. I've done some stunt driving where you know I'm, in a, I'm playing a character that the car zips up to a curb. As far as like you know getting, going in and out of traffic or or leaping off things, that's that's not I'm I can't do those kind of things. Um, mm-hmm. So I would say the training for the stunts really came from my my grad school, my my theater training before I became a professional, and then uh, just doing it too. I've been on some low budget. <laughs> I've done some low budget films where they're like, "Okay, uh, okay, Kevin, we need you to uh, pull the car in here, skid, and stop at that thing there." I was like, "Okay, I guess I can do that," because <laughs> they didn't have a stuntman there, so. Yeah, you know, so I've learned on the job that way too. But uh, mm-hmm. as far as the actual like stunt, you know, how to hit somebody and make it look real without hitting them, uh, that kind of stuff is basic stage combat that I learned over the years. Interesting. Yeah. I, I I think that brings a little bit more to your career as well. You know, that you can do those things uh, versus somebody that can't do them at all. Yeah, and particularly you know, and um, as I said, in the in stage work, obviously. Uh, Low, like independent films often, but you know, like anything big, they're going to have a stuntman there because it's just part of the a, it's you know part of the contract. You know, the SAG Screen Actors Guild wants a stuntman there for a safety and because it's you know they know what they're doing. Uh, but right. in many cases, if it's something small, I've, I've been called upon to do it. And I mean, I actually I, I've done a few. Uh, there's one picture of, if you went to my website at all of me being. Um, hit and it's, a, and it's just this fantastic shot a guy just punches me and it, i'm caught mid mid air as i'm falling to the ground and so there, there was a stunt i did like over and over again getting hit and landing on a linoleum floor so that was you know that was challenging um so yeah i when i'm called i when i'm called upon it i can I, I can do it and i'm not afraid to do them but once again if you want me to leap off a building you probably need to get a stunt man for that yeah <laughs> Although you know what, <laughs> actors are, are, are we, we we hate to say no. I might give it a shot. Who knows? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you got to be open for everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where, where's the camera? And okay. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Uh, but um, so yeah, but I can. I've done uh, mostly fight stuff and and driving stuff is what I've been called on doing. 
over the. Well, that still sounds like call. fun. Yeah. And many times it's now you have to... some projects coming up. Are you able to speak about any of them? Um, not officially, I don't think. Okay. Um, All right. Sorry. I know how that works. <laughs> no, it's okay. I know how that works. <laughs> I, I, I think you guys said 1.7 million people will be hearing this at some point, so yeah, yeah. That's probably not a good idea right now. Yeah, some if point. there's an NDA, <laughs> and actually an interesting, I, an interesting thing, we just have a, a new contract with um, the Screen Actors uh, SAG Africa just signed a new con- new commercials contract, and in the contract is built in an NDA, uh, not non-disclosure agreement. We don't even mm-hmm. like if you go to a set. We don't even have to sign them anymore because <laughs> it's part of the. It's been collectively bargained that we cannot talk about things. So, oh, interesting! Kind of, kind of a new, oh. kind, of, kind of a new thing they've thrown out there, and that includes, uh, you know, posting, twittering, facebooking. Can't do anything without uh, the permission of of the producers. Um, you're allowed to do something like, "Hey, I just worked on a great show," you know, but yeah, that's I can't it. Tell you the show, I can't tell you the. The, the product, if it's a commercial, uh, yeah, it's really there. It's a big thing now, particularly with the social networking, because you know somebody does one tweet and you know a storyline's ruined, or uh, exactly, or uh, or one tweet and a new drug is exposed. But you know, if you're doing a commercial right. for Google or something, <laughs> so yeah, so um, uh, it's actually part of the rules now uh, beyond just signing, because a lot of times you go to projects and you sign them. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know I signed it and I'll honor it. Uh, and primarily, I think the big thing to be concerned about in that world is to uh, is to do any kind of posting or social networking about specifically what 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 what, what you're working on or what it's going to be. Um, I mean, to the point, you know, we, we actually a lot of times for, for projects, I'll just get my pages. Um, well, if I'm auditioning for something, there are several shows they just send you fake scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not even the real characters. It's not the real scene because they don't want that out. Even, you know. Right. What? What? So um, you'll be doing. You know, it's basically what is going to happen in the scene. But they'll write, rewrite the lines. They'll rewrite the na- character names and whatnot. Uh, all that to answer. Yeah, I can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. But you know I, what? Uh, the I, great I, thing about social media is is that it has back shows that have been canceled. Oh and it gosh, may not be on right? a specific specific channel or network, but, you know, to Netflix or Hulu or something like that, um, because of all of the people that are able to share with the networks or whoever that, you know, yeah. hey, we don't want this off air. We need these sh- these people back. You know, we need the show back, and, and it's really worked well. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, Netflix doesn't um, have have ratings, and they're pretty, pretty protective of their mm-hmm. analytics, but I've heard, I mean, Fuller House, like, broke their right. records. <laughs> of, yeah, of, right. Of I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's great, you know, that, I mean, hopefully they'll, you know, bring Wilder Grace back that way. Who knows? Um, yeah, oh, please. <laughs> Again, um, from your lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only if only if it's Will Grace and Ralph. That that that'd be the best. Way to definitely, do it. definitely. There you go. <laughs> definitely, it has um, to have Ralph. But yeah, no, you're right. It, it it's a it's it's great. I mean, uh, while we have to be careful on what we exactly say, mm-hmm. what you can say is, I mean, it just gets generated so so quickly and so, uh, you know, I mean, and and broadly. I mean, so it's, it's a really interesting you know age we're in. I think. Um, with, with all this, all these Facebook things and the Twitter things and the, I mean, it's just the, you know, um, being my age, I've kind of lived through what it was like before all of this, <laughs> before you mm-hmm. know, made big like computers were everywhere in our lives, and now deeply into it. So it's uh, even in my short time and in, 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 in on Earth, I've just seen such amazing changes and, and growth of the of technology. It's it's incredible. Um, I, I get kind of amazed by things pretty easily, though. I still don't know how this telephone. Oh, there's something there. What is that? Yeah, Hello? I don't know. It's just our fire alarm. Oh, not, yeah, David, don't worry about it. Just a fire. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah, right. You have to go. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. It's okay. probably a. It's just probably a drill. 
Yeah, well, but, yeah. I yeah. think maybe you should hang up and go check that. I mean, we're at the end of the show anyhow, and we'd rather have you safe than sorry. No, I think it'd be really good, really interesting interview, though, if, you know, if you're on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd bring all oh kinds of new, God. you know. No. <laughs> Just think about it, David. It's for the show. It's up to this you. This show is on fire. Literally. Yeah, there you go. The show is on fire. Alicia no. Keys to sing the, the, uh, the theme song for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, it stopped, so hopefully that's the end of that so and you're yeah. okay but yeah. uh speaking of social media would you share with our listeners where they can find you uh your your at names and such oh yeah sure uh let's see well at, on facebook i'm uh actor kevin brief is the is the professional page i'd love for anybody to go there and hit like and build up my likes there uh so i like kevin your brief page it, thank you it is a nice page isn't it it is. Uh, no. <laughs> That's why you like. No, thank you very much. Yeah. So anybody <laughs> that would like to like me, I would like them to like me at actor Kevin Brief. Uh, my my new Instagram is Kevin underscore Brief, uh, and I think my Twitter is just at Kevin Brief. I'm really really inventive with my names, as you can tell. Uh, yes, yes, and it is at Kevin Brief. At Kevin and Brief on B-R-I-E-F. Twitter. Kevin Brief. Yes, Brief as in briefcase. Or underwear, whatever works for you. But uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin Brief, and then uh, you know you can check me out on IMDb as well. I have a website, KevinBrief.com. You can check out clips and uh, I mean uh, my resume and all that stuff. But I also have uh, clips from all the many of the shows I've been on, as, as well as demo reels and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that'd be great. So uh, did I fill get them all? Got the Instagram, Kevin Brief underscore Brief, Kevin underscore Brief at Kevin Brief. And actor Kevin Brief on Facebook. Yes. And then as far as I know, unless you're hiding something person. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, KevinBrief.com if you'd like to go to the website. And that's about all the Kevin Brief you're going to want, I think. So. <laughs> Although I'd well, like to say we want to thank you Kevin very Brief, much. <laughs> oh yeah, it was <laughs> never such a pleasure talking to you, sir. Oh, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. I, I hope. Uh, I hope your your listeners enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed being here. Thank you, and you are welcome back anytime. When once your new yeah. projects are being you know able to be talked about, we, <laughs> we okay, yeah, mind yeah, having you back. You'll be the first to know. Yeah, no, Thank you. I'll, so I'll, much. I'd love to be back anytime, and uh, hopefully we can make that happen. Thank but you. Meantime, thank you. Thank so you much. so much for thank the time, and uh, and and then stay safe from that fire, David. I'm going to try. Thank you. <laughs> and keep those dogs under control, Pam. I know, right? <laughs> I think I'm going to get little muzzles for them from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yorkies. How, how cute. Uh, I, I had a friend. I'm sorry, we're tying up. But I had a friend that had a had no, Yorkie. That's okay. and, and she had, you know, a lot. They're pretty delicate dogs, I think. Whatever. Her dog yeah. needed a lot of, like, attention early on. <laughs> At one point she said, mm-hmm. see that dog right there? Seven pounds. Cost me seven thousand dollars that dog. <laughs> it's like about oh a thousand bucks a pound. It's about a thousand bucks a pound I spent on that dog. But but you would never do anything oh. different, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's like it was a great. It's a great dog. But it made me laugh. It, it yeah, they're, really they're, they're is. And, and the only reason I have them is because um, just real quickly, when I got pregnant with my oldest son, I became allergic to cats. At that time, I had a cat that was eighteen years old. I lived with her another year and a half before she passed. Then when I got pregnant with my last son, which was my fourth child, I became allergic to dogs. Um, A few years after, and I had to give my dogs away. I had a German Shepherd at that time and then a mixed mixed dog. And um, then I found out a few years after that that I could actually possibly have dogs that, you know, don't shed. And that would be either Yorkies or Poodles or one other one that I can't think of. So I went to make the I went to make the purchase of my first Yorkie, and mind you, yes, they are very expensive. And I I made sure that I made a deal with this lady that if I became allergic after a few days, that you know I would be returning the dog, and she had no problem with that. Well, needless to say, they never went back. So yeah, that's uh, at least the I mean not not to minimize 
your loss, but a cat making it 20, almost 20 years, that's pretty cool. And so that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she was but awesome. Yeah, and she is, was uh, the that's best. a marvelous run. I, I, I hope I hope you made your your kids pay for them, you know, making you allergic to these animals, and oh, I yeah, wish. use that as <laughs> use that as guilt over them for the rest of their lives. Uh, <laughs> I wish yeah, I, I've got yeah. other things to hang on their heads. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, with four uh, but, kids, uh, you always find something. So, <laughs> oh my bad. <laughs> Four kids and two dogs. <laughs> yep, yep. But they're and we, all, actually, all we, my we kids can't go without older, finding out so. David's pet history. Do you have a, a pet, David? I do. I have. I I do have a cat. She's nine years old. And I have. We. I have two cats. But you saw the picture of the one, and she's like the best cat in the world. But that's my opinion. So, um, yeah, pets are nice. Right. Now and then, we just my wife and I go. Yeah, we have things living with us. That's odd, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of an odd mm-hmm. concept. <laughs> we have creatures that live with us, and we yeah. take care of them. Not bad happen. Um, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's better all, uh, than other creatures. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> let, before we go, let me just once again, if you had brought it up, but I would love if anybody wants to uh, get on, bring bring Carl back to Day's movement. Please feel free to. Definitely. Uh, you have you have my you have my permission if you need that as if you oh, thank so. you <laughs> thank you we're love, we're very love big on doing things like that well I, I, I assuming you you guys like them and would like to see more of them yes. I, I I would like that too so please do what you will or not we will will we I will and we have a soap that. show we have a soap and soaps and review show uh, twice a month and this Thursday is our our day to have one so. Um, there's, you know, other co-hosts on that as well that watch Days, and I'll make sure that David gets that news out to them. I will send them an email, and we'll all get on it. Yeah. So don't worry when you see your name over and over on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you know we who, are not stalking you. Know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I could use a good stalker. What the heck? Come on. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. You I know that. Our on that note, we'll no. <laughs> <laughs> well, once, once again, I, I know I, I did, we digressed there from our goodbyes, so I didn't want to hold you guys up oh, with, the, with the York that's story. That's all right. Thanks that's again. You enjoy point. the rest of your evening. I will. Take care. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. Take care, too. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, that was a nice so day. much Fun, yes. I love him. I love him. And uh, definitely would like to see more of him on days, so we will get on that. And I want to give a special shout-out to uh, Vonda for offering the interview to us. We appreciate it. We thank you, and we look forward to our next interview, which I will not announce yet. We're going to announce that a little bit closer to the date. Um, also, if you would like to tune in on Thursday with David and Tamara, um, Carolyn, Liz, who am I forgetting? Oh, uh, the new one. What's no. her name? Oh, Lisa. 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 At 7 p.m. Eastern Time, they'll be on to review the last two weeks of All Four Soap. So join in. You are more than welcome to call in, and the phone number is one seven one eight five zero six one five four zero. Press one, and uh, the link will be uh, sent out tonight for Thursday's show. So I think that's a wrap, and it's great Should being I? back. Thanks again for joining. It me. is. It is wonderful having you back. Let me say, I missed you. Thank you. Thank you. I miss talking with you. Thank you. I'm going to try to make this a little bit more regular, but we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> you take it one day at a time. We can't ask for anything yeah. else. That's it. That's it. So, everybody, don't forget, follow Kevin on Twitter, at Kevin Brief, and let him know how much you enjoy him on days, if you watched him on there, or one of his many other TV shows or films that he's been in. Um, I'm sure he would enjoy that. And uh, actor Kevin Brief on Facebook and Kevin underscore Brief on Instagram. Um, Thanks again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you again soon.
Take care, everybody. Have a you, great night. Have a great night. Good night, Thanks, all. Thanks, David. Thank you. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com.